What's up everybody? Welcome back. Moving on to the next question on the test. We have a quadratic that has the following two characteristics below and we have to find the y-intercept. So this quadratic has 3 and negative 5 as the x-intercepts and y equals 36 is the max value. Now before doing any algebraic stuff, I highly recommend you draw a diagram when you get a question like this just so you can see everything visually. It's going to make more sense to you. So negative 5 and 3 are the x-intercepts. So this is negative 5, let's say. And then this is 3. Uh, let's actually make it a little more to scale. So let's put the 3 over here. And then we're told y equals 36 is the max value. So what does this mean here? That means that this is the y value of the vertex, the y value of the vertex. Can we get the x value? Well, we can because we have the intercepts. The x value of the vertex is always the midpoint between the intercepts. So we could just take negative 5 plus 3 divided by 2. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2 divided by 2 gives us negative 1. So we know the vertex has a coordinate negative 1 and 36. So that negative 1, 36, that's like up here. All right, does that make sense? So we had to do a little bit of extra work here with this information to get that coordinate there, to know where the vertex is actually happening. We had the y value, we had to find the x value. And from here, just have this quadratic like that. Right? And we're looking for this here. We're looking for the y-intercept. And we know this y-intercept is going to have a coordinate 0 and some kind of y value. The x value is going to be 0. So how can we find that? Well, we have to make an equation. And in this case, we can actually make two different equations. We can put we can make an equation in vertex form and we could do it in factor form because we have the x-intercepts and the vertex. So I'm actually going to work with um, I'm going to work with factored form. So I'm going to have a x minus r x minus s right where r and s are the x-intercepts. So x minus negative 5 is like x plus 5 and x minus 3 is over here. And then we could plug in this coordinate, negative 1 and 36, for x and y and solve for the a value. So we would put 36 for y, then the a value would be negative 1 plus 5. Uh, this bracket would be negative 1 plus 5, and this would be negative 1 minus 3. So this would be negative 1 plus 5 is positive 4, negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. And this is still 36. Um, so this would end up being negative 16a, so a would be uh, 36 divided by negative 16, or negative 36 over 16. And this actually simplifies to what? Negative uh, 9 over 4? Right? You could divide both the numerator and the denominator by 4. So negative 9 over 4 is the a value. So the equation is y equals negative 9 over 4 x plus 5, x minus 3, like that. And now that we have the equation for this parabola, we can find this y-intercept by plugging in 0 for x. So if we plug in 0 for x, 0 plus 5 is just 5, 0 minus 3 is negative 3, and then we'll have um, what? This is like 5 over 1, this is like negative 3 over 1. So negative 9 times 5 times negative 3, that would be negative 45 uh, times negative 3 would give us uh, positive 135. And 4 times 1 times 1 gives us 4. So that there is your y-intercept. And if you want the decimal value of that, if you divide that in your calculator, you end up getting 33.75. Right, so 0 and 135 over 4 is the y-intercept, or 0 and 33.75.
Now, if you wanted to do it the other way, if you wanted to put this in vertex form, you would have y equals a uh, x plus 1 squared plus 36. Negative 1, 36 is the vertex. And then you could plug in one of these x-intercepts here to get um, to solve for that a value. So you could plug in either 3 and 0 or negative 5 and 0. And uh, you would actually end up getting the same a value, negative 9 over 4. That would go in front. So uh, a would be negative 9 over 4 when you solve for it. And then when you plug in 0 for x to get that y-intercept, you would end up getting that same value. Right, so either way works. I chose to do uh, factor form, but you could have easily done vertex form as well. So when you get a question like this, uh, quadratic given characteristics, graph as many characteristics as possible. And even from the characteristics you're given, try to get more characteristics if you can without doing any algebra. So in this case, we were able to get that negative one value for the x value of the vertex. Um, and then once you have everything that you possibly can in your graph, then go into making your equation. Process will be a lot smoother.